Welcome to the channel. In this video, we will look at configuring OpenVPN on Mikrotik devices. But before we start, please like this video and leave a comment. The more comments, the more YouTube will promote this video. Now let's briefly discuss what OpenVPN is. OpenVPN is a free, open-source implementation of virtual private network VPN technology for creating encrypted connections between two client machines or enabling a centralized VPN server for simultaneous operation of multiple clients. OpenVPN allows establishing connections between computers behind NAT firewalls without the need to change their settings. By default, VPN uses port 1194 for operation. However, this can be changed, and most often the port is changed because client devices are taken on the road. For example, if you go abroad, it's a common situation that everything is closed in a hotel, and in the best case, only ports 80 and 443 will be open. Therefore, it's a very good option to transfer the OpenVPN server to port 443. Note. OpenVPN, like any other product using SSL encryption, is sensitive to time differences between the client and server. Therefore, first of all, correctly set the time on Mikrotik. Now let's move on to practice. I will conditionally divide the video into three parts. VPN Server Configuration VPN Client Configuration, where another Mikrotik will act as the client. VPN Client Configuration, where a regular computer running Windows OS will act as the client. We connect to the Mikrotik that will act as the VPN server, and the first thing we need is to create certificates. Let's go to System Certificate and create a new root certificate for our Certificate Authority, CA. What is a root certificate? A root certificate is the highest certificate in the tree, whose private key is used to sign other certificates. That is, we will use this certificate to sign other certificates. We click plus and fill in the fields on the general tab. In the name field, we write the name of the root certificate CA. In the country field, we enter the abbreviated name of your country UA. In the state field, we enter your state Ukraine in the locality field. We enter, for example, city Kyiv. Then in the common name field, we enter the name C. Then we set the key type RSA, its size 4096, and its lifetime in days 365. Then we go to the key usage tab and check the boxes next to CRL sign and key search sign. Then click apply. Then we click sign. In the host field, we need to specify the IP address of our VPN server. For example, I'll enter 127.0.0.1 and click start. Done. The certificate is created. Now we will use this certificate to sign other certificates. It's also worth noting that the certificate should have the trusted checkbox ticked, meaning it's a trusted certificate. The next step is to create a server certificate. We click plus and fill in the available fields on the general tab, similar to the previous one. The only difference here will be in the name of the certificate. Then we go to the key usage tab and check the boxes next to digital signature, key encipherment, and TLS server. Click apply, then click sign. And as I said earlier, we will sign these certificates with the root certificate. We choose it and click start. Done, the server certificate is created. Now let's create a client certificate. Everything here is similar to the previous certificates. The only difference is in the name of the certificate. We go to the key usage tab and check the box next to TLS client. Click apply, then sign and sign it with the root certificate. We're done with the certificates. If everything is done correctly, you will have three certificates. Note that the root certificate should have clad flags, the rest key. The next step is to export these certificates so that they can then be transferred to the client. Right-click on the specific certificate and select export. 
If everything went well, this certificate will appear in the file folder. Then we do the same with the client certificate. The only thing we'll do here is password protect this certificate so that it cannot be used without a password. The main thing here is not to forget this password. Now let's move on to the direct configuration of the VPN server. The first thing we'll do is create an address pool that the server will distribute to clients. We go to the IP tab, pool tab and create a pool. Done. Then we'll go to the PPP tab, to the Profile tab, and create a profile for the OpenVPN server. Here you need to name the profile, specify the address for the server itself. It should not be included in the pool you created earlier, and select the pool that the server will distribute. Done. Then, we'll go to the Interface tab and enable our VPN server. Here we can change the port on which your VPN will work. This is appropriate if your clients will be working somewhere behind NAT and the provider has closed all ports for them. Also, here you need to select the profile you created and in the certificate field, select the server certificate you created. Click apply, done. Then we'll go to PPP secrets and make sure that user authentication is enabled. To do this, click PPP authentication and accounting where there should be a checkbox next to accounting. Then we'll create an account for the client, click plus and fill in the fields. Client name, enter the password, then choose OpenVPN and select the profile we created. Done. Next, we need to open a port for VPN operation in the server's firewall. We go to the firewall and create a rule in the input chain. Protocol TCP, DST port. We enter the port you chose for VPN operation. Go to the action tab and select accept, done. We move the rule up and sign it, done. That's all for the VPN server setup for now. Later we'll only need to add routing between networks. Now we need to copy the certificates for connecting clients. To use the client, we need to export the private key and client certificate, as well as the root certificate of the certificate authority. Here, you just need to select the necessary certificate and copy it where you need. In this case, I'm copying to the PC to then transfer it to another device. The next section is setting up an OpenVPN client on a Microtic router. First of all, we upload to the device the certificates that we exported on the server. To do this, go to System Certificate and use the Import button. In the window, specify the certificate file and the passphrase that we set during export. As a result, you will have two certificates, a client certificate with a private key, as indicated by the KT flag, and a root certificate of the certificate authority, with the LAT flag. Let's remember the names of the certificates, or rename them. Then we'll go to PPP interface and create a new interface of type OVPN client. In the connector field, specify the address of your OpenVPN server, port 1194 or the one you use, mode IP. Below, specify the credentials created for this user on the server in the user and password fields. Even lower specify the encryption parameters similar to what you specified on the server. In the certificate field, select the client certificate. If everything was done correctly, the connection will be established as soon as you create the interface. Then, for clients to have access to the network behind the server and vice versa, it is necessary to configure routing between them. Let's go to the server and see how this client's connection looks. As we can see, a dynamic interface OVPN Mikrotik was created it is not possible to configure routing with such an interface, as the route will break when the client disconnects. So let's create a permanent interface for this client. Let's go to Interfaces and create a new interface of type OVPN Server Binding. In the settings, specify a name. It is recommended to give interfaces understandable names. In the User field, specify the user whose connection will be bound to this interface, Mikrotik. Done. Then we'll go to IP Routes and add a new route in the DST. Address field. Specify the network behind the client. This specifies the local network of the client, the one that the client's DHCP server distributes. 
In our case, it's 192.168.5.024. In the gateway field, specify the interface of our OpenVPN connection. Let's ping the client device, and as you can see, everything works. Now, let's do the same on the client side, only in the DST. Address field specify the local network of the server. The next step will be setting up a standard OpenVPN client on a PC here, I just have to make a digression. The fact is that during the preparation of the video, I went through dozens of instructions on setting up OpenVPN in a configuration where the client is a computer, and almost all of them required creating configuration files manually, copying keys and a bunch of incomprehensible movements. Moreover, none of the configurations that are on YouTube worked correctly for me personally. And after spending several days breaking several keyboards, I finally found an up-to-date and simple, and most importantly, working instruction on setting up OpenVPN, where the computer acts as a client. And now I'll show it to you, and I hope you'll appreciate it with a like, or better with a comment. So at the very beginning, you need to download and install OpenVPN Connect for Windows. I'll leave the download link in the description below the video. Then we go to the VPN server, which in our case is Mikrotik here, as in the previous step, we generate three certificates CA, server, and client. We make all these certificates trusted. Then two certificates need to be imported. CA we just import, and the client one needs to be password protected. This password will be needed when connecting the client. Then we create an address pool for distribution to clients. Then we open TCP port 1194 in the input chain in the firewall. The next step is to create a profile and account for the client. Here, everything is similar to how we did it in the previous block when we made the Mikrotik to Mikrotik connection. Then we need to enable and configure the OpenVPN server itself. Here we need to choose the profile we created and also choose the server certificate for operation. And this is where the difference begins between the current instruction on setting up and those that are on YouTube. We click export OVPN and fill in the corresponding fields, IP address or DNS name of the VPN server, which the client will connect to. Then we choose the certificates and key that we imported and click start, done. The configuration file is created. Then we need to transfer it to the client's computer. It can be simply dragged with the mouse. The next step is to modernize it a bit, open the file with notepad and write the routing to the server network. This is necessary for the client to have access to resources in the server's local network. If you don't need this, then you don't need to edit the configuration file. Done. Now we launch OpenVPN Connect, which we downloaded at the very beginning. We go to the Upload File tab and upload the configuration file that we copied from Mikrotik before this. Done. Then we enter the client login that we created on Macrotic and click connect. The next step is to enter the client password and below the key password that we set when importing the certificate. As we can see, everything worked. Now we can go to the server and see that the connection is indeed active. And that's all from me. We'll meet in the next videos.